Hello. Welcome. To the rip, the rip with Grace and Melissa. Woo. Guys, it's- welcome back. It's the what, Melissa? It's the season finale. The season finale. Barrel, barrel, barrel. We made it. Guys, wow. I I knew we would, you know, but gosh, it's it's comforting that we're here, you know. I, on the other hand, had a few moments where I, I wasn't as sure. I'm glad that you had faith. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you were really pulled us, pulled us through and happy to be here. Melissa, how did you think this season for you went? Your first season here on the Rift? I had so much fun. It was so much fun. I thought our guests were amazing. I'm so happy I know you better. Hope I learned that I don't finish sentences all the time. That's um, okay. It's That's been okay. a great experience. So thanks well, for I think it's the same, same exact thing to you, except it was great to get to know you better. And <laughs> um, How do you feel about this one? Now oh my gosh, I thought this was well. a fabulous season. I had so much fun. You were fantastic. Our guests were awesome. And I feel like it went by so fast. This quarter was such a blur. And now we're here. Now we're here and we have a fantastic show for you guys. We have a very, very special guest. And I wish it was a secret, but... <laughs> you're probably reading his name right now but we'll pretend like you can't see it yeah youtube is um a revealing medium so yeah but if you're just listening then this is really going to be exciting for you yeah you if don't you, even know what we're about to say if you happen to listen to ucla radio or are visually impaired then yes. boy do we have one for you boy do we have a surprise for you but before we get into our guest we have Some information that I got, you guys I know are dying to know. We've been talking about it all season. Melissa, what is is it that we have in store? We were building hype. We have our official Harry Potter results. What you guys, like the pressing information will change your life. Grace, would you like to go first? Sure. I am so excited to share this with you guys. Should I share my screen or should I just read it? Um, if you feel that it's best read, like go for that. Otherwise, let visual learning, baby. My concern is I don't know how to turn off my messages on my computer. And right now a group chat is blowing up because I'm just so fucking popular. Uh, and it's very <laughs> annoying. So I think I'll just read it. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So drum roll, please. Basically, the way this quiz broke it up was with percentages and... Mm. I am, this is very shocking for me. Oh my gosh, this is very shocking. But my number one, my biggest percentage is a small, very small 35% Ravenclaw. Ah, your brain just popped off. My brain popped off, but that's the big, I'm only 35% Ravenclaw. And then to follow that up, I'm 27% Gryffindor. Followed okay. by 24% Slytherin, followed uh, by 14% Hufflepuff. All right. So I feel like throughout the weeks, there was a few different breakdowns that were predicted, but I, the diver- <laughs> it's good since you made some claims with the divergent thing. Proof. I was pretty accurate. I'm proud to say I, I, not, like, I don't have a single house that is over a 40% like <laughs> matched with me. I'm just... Oh, I'm so well-rounded. I'm so just, you know, All you the can't best. pinpoint me anywhere. I'm just too crazy for that. You can't <laughs> put me anywhere, you know, in a You're... single house. So yeah, that's it. But I'm shockingly predominantly, if I can even say so, Ravenclaw. And then, then kind of the same amount of Gryffindor and Slytherin. So I would say that's, um, that is good. That is a good one. I think that it's telling, like we said, that Slytherin is above Hufflepuff. Um, I know. For the viewers that forgot, I was, I grew up a Hufflepuff, a straight, straight set Hufflepuff. Yeah. I also think that you, you captured like every, um, like teenager's dream to be Ravenclaw, like, especially someone who likes the Harry Potter series, first yes. Ravenclaw, then Griff- Gryffindor. So I'm proud of you. Thank I'm you. And those, are, you. those are my results. Uh, now we'll get to, let's hear yours. Okay. I'll read mine since you, um, read yours and okay. We'll keep it consistent. I am 20, I, I guess mine is described as you are all the things. Um, 
So I got 29% Ravenclaw, 29% Slytherin, 26% Gryffindor, and 16% Hufflepuff. Melissa, you're more divergent than me. This is, I, I was quite surprised. I'm also like had a moment because I, when I got 29% Slytherin, I was like, that if I was any less in touch with myself, that would have been a crisis moment. Um, but you <laughs> know, like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Who even am I? Wow. Do I need to be wearing more black? Yeah. Um, I feel like, do I need to just be sadder more of the time? Am I yeah. actually sad and not even aware of it? Well, um, am I depressed? Am I depressed? <laughs> been there. Um, yeah, so, but at the other, on the other hand, I feel like that gives me more comedic credit, you know, totally. um, to be a little bit, yeah, but I, I had fun. With that I had one. fun too, and now I feel like we can both say we're very well-rounded, amazing, incredible, cool people that you want to be friends with. Yep, we are the moment, and we... <laughs> and this is a great segue into our guest, who, dare I say, is also all of those things. Everybody... You know him, you missed him, and you might love him. I don't know, but that's for you to decide. Everybody, give it up for a round of applause for our special guest, Andrew Batap. <laughs> Hello. This brings me back. Welcome. Welcome. It's good to be here. It really how, is. Yeah, how does it feel being back here? You know, in the waiting room? You know, watching you guys do that, I was like, I'm just, I'm just a guy watching the riff. And then I remembered, no, I'm a guy who's about to go on the riff. And then I, I got a little nervous. Oh, yeah. A little nervous. A little bit, yeah. It's, it's it, almost like they're going to call me up. Oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on. Ooh. We could have offered you a walk-on song or something, you know, give yeah. you like a... Next time. Yeah um it's clear there's so <laughs> <laughs> uh, might have been an off-screen journey that we're gonna we're gonna explore here but um I'm glad you're back um <laughs> I'm glad you're happy to be back I certainly yeah. hope that um if you've seen any of the season you haven't been like oh my god that's a desecration no um, it's been amazing you guys seem to be gelling <sighs> thank Got a you vibe man. the riff vibe the riff five. I think I think we've done a great job. It's it was it was it was so bizarre for me not to have you because it was I all I knew was was you. But um, Melissa has been obviously like literally the best. So I've had some fun, but it's mm -hmm. it's great to have you back. And I think we're all just dying to dive into it. What has Mister X Riff host been up to? Gosh, well, it's my last quarter here. So yeah, I've been wow. busy finishing up school. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time with my girlfriend, Christina, because she came back after being gone for Thanks. like three months. Uh, that's been lovely. Um, and doing comedy. Nice. So let's start with school. You're graduating mm. as we all know. You're a Mr. You're a STEM computer person, right? I do computers. You do computers. Yeah. Are you happy to be done? I am thrilled to be done. I don't want to do any more of it. I'm ready to be done. Do you feel like now that you're going to have a STEM degree, do you feel like justified in any kind of po potential narcissistic tendon? Not that you're oh, not implying that you have them, but do you feel like you have no, a he does. now to Definitely. do that more so? Are you, do I feel better than other people? Yes. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Like, do you feel justified in feeling better? Because I feel like that might be one of the only justifications for getting a STEM degree. I mean, I feel, I feel like I've earned something by the many hours I've put into it. I don't feel like I'm special because of that. I feel like anyone who wanted to do what I did and was willing to put the hours in could have. Um, but yeah, I feel happy about my past decisions. I, I feel better about going into comedy with some kind of future job is security, the word, or prospects. Yeah, I'm That's valuable. Me and, yeah, me and Melissa are missing that. 
That's what, see, but you don't need it. You guys are going to go out. You're going to explode onto the stage. And they're not going to be like, oh, but where's your computer science degree? <laughs> but who doesn't like a little security, right? Yeah, but was yeah. it worth it? We'll find out. Well, wow. certainly with the, the beautiful, that was a beautiful answer, very <laughs> beautifully <laughs> humble. So you putting credit to the degree there. Good but you. I am a changed man since <gasps> you've last yeah. seen me. Since what I left that? the riff. What does that mean? It means I'm at peace with the world. I am kinder. I have more love in my heart. Uh, and I have more love and compassion for all the people and animals and plants around me. Did you, did you like do acid or something? I did shrooms. <laughs> I knew it. Was it. a great shroom strip. And Is that truly I, why? Is that truly why you're saying this? Uh, I did do a shroom strip in the last 10 weeks, and it really did leave me with more love and goodness in my heart. Wow. I'm proud of myself for, am I? That was intuitive, yeah. I don't know if I, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I was like, is this a correlation causation thing directly with the riff, or are we got yeah. the riff? Or... No, no, I just, shrooms. I emerged from the riff, and I was like, okay, something is lost. Now I need to find something, and I found love wow so how have you in this new you know meditative state that you're in mm -hmm. how has it changed your everyday life have i listen been... to people more i try to understand their perspective more wow. i care for people more i care about my ecological footprint more really do you like recycle now or something i always recycle wow now compost, maybe i also compost <laughs> Boxes no, I'm check. just more conscious about driving less, I guess. Good for you, Andrew. Well, we're very, not only are we proud of you that you found more love in your heart, but we're excited that you're graduating and becoming really a excited. big boy. I'm kind of, I'm kind of a big boy now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So then what does, what does this mean? So what is, like, there's so many questions. So you're graduating. So what's next? Well, it hasn't been decided. Don't tell my girlfriend that I said this because I don't know if she would want this being put out into the world yet, but I think I'm going to be living with Christina in Chicago. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> That's one year, so exciting. Or maybe less if we want to commit to a shorter term lease. Uh, she's more hesitant than I am. She said yes before and then gone, well, maybe, uh, maybe it's a little fast. And I'm like, what? No! You Is she said from there? Yes. What? Is she from there? Uh, no, she's from Camarillo. Um, but why Chicago? Yeah, we talked about Chicago for a couple reasons. One, she has two very close friends there, and she visited there recently. Stayed there for like a month and loved it. Uh, and two, it's like a comedy mecca, so we'd go there, get to do the improv, meet comedy people, um, and you know, it'll be fun. I'm, I'm young. I want to do a thing, you know? Do a thing? That's so exciting. Well, I think Chicago would be really fun. That's definitely going to be a big change in weather. And I know weather is not a fun topic, but I feel like in terms of Chicago, compared to Cali, it is. People will keep bringing it up, and my response is always, I'll be good. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You got a beanie on, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Get the ears covered. <laughs> No, I, I get cold good. extremely easily. It's going to be an interesting um, living situation. So when, heard, is that, when is that yeah. supposed to happen? Uh, after summer. We're going to start looking for places. Crazy. Yeah. That's so... Is, does your girlfriend do comedy as well then? Or is she... Yes. She's going to start, start doing it more seriously. Wait, um, that's new to me. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. She She's always had you know comedy aspirations but i didn't she's... i knew that she's acted in your work before but i didn't know <laughs> she herself was pursuing comedy yeah i i it's definitely one of her many passions um but she loves it and she wants to start trying to do open mics and improv classes to you know, see how that feels um so yeah that's, that's so cool so exciting but do not tell her i said all this because it's still we're having the discussion we're gonna see how it goes 
I'm sure she'll end up just being like, let's go for it. Yeah. I hope. Actually, can you talk to her? Yeah, I'll send her a text. Thank this, you. Yeah, a little peer pressure from the from us now. Can yeah. you both talk to her? Yeah, we'll set up a conference call with her. Thank you. Know, facilitate your Do it separate. Decisions. You know, yeah. two pronged approach. Like, whoa, mm. two people are telling me. You, you want to good do cop it. or bad cop? Yeah. Um, right, I'll take I'll take bad cop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, you should fucking do it. You gotta fucking go where else. <laughs> <laughs> one eye open, one. That'll work. Uh, well, you're, you're a real friend. I'm. Uh, you're welcome. I'm so so you're gonna be chilling here this summer. So I might be going home. No, I am going home for the summer. Is I'm this gonna visit family time? Yeah, yeah I kind of uh, moved my stuff yesterday. I had a friend visiting and he drove back um, with my stuff. Um, oh. Yeah, I didn't have him like you know i was like hey come over and get my stuff he visited and i was like hey can you take all my stuff back and drop it at my house <laughs> like, sure and he you was can... like yeah sure wow like are you how when's the last time you've been home for that long is it been since it's the summer no i visited after summer did i was it winter break i think winter break are you looking forward to it are you thinking you're gonna do comedy or is it gonna be like a little hiatus no, it's, I'm going to really dive in to comedy because oh. um, I've kind of been taking a little bit of a hiatus the last few months. So uh, I want to ask about that. Yeah, to, to get into that conversation, what have you been doing currently with comedy and what is like the game plan specifically? Because I feel like when we last spoke, you're going to probably have more of a specific game plan. The game plan this summer is to focus on TikTok stuff. I've been saying it for so long, but it's what, it's what I got to do. Try, got, try to get a following there try to transfer that to instagram and twitch i would love to do live streams and a podcast and then if that goes well a patreon and cameo and hope to get some kind of money there that's the uh that's what i'm gonna do in the next three months uh i'll just uh get my patreon cameo following um uh, but that's you know that's what i see as the closest path to a steady income at least being a freelance comedy person right wow own. well that's very that's very ambitious but i also feel like very doable yeah it's it, like it is doable if it could just start happening you know yeah stuff just has to start working and i know i can do it i just gotta do it and it to work and then and then the rest of my life is easy i can't wait for the rest of my life to be easy it's gonna be great <laughs> me too wow mm -hmm. you're uh -huh. telling me so mm -hmm. TikTok. Yeah. Uh, but, but what about stand up? Put it on the back burner. Okay. If, it's just yeah. I was just gonna say if we're think tanking it, um, and you said your stuff was gone, you could get into the minimalism space on TikTok <gasps> and then transfer from there. Little life hack. That's a good idea. Potentially. I have given up a lot of my stuff to send back home. It's so much nicer. I have like the shoes I wear every day and the slides I wear every day, my desk stuff, and like the couple of clothes that I have, and that's it. And I don't need other stuff. It's it's actually quite a coincidence you brought this up because I today I'm home right now because I move a lot of the junk that I won't be using for the summer back home because I'm going to New York for the summer. No way! I'm that's so excited. That's well, really exciting. Yeah, I'm just, um, the, the Riff listeners kind of know the shtick already, but I'm just kind of going out there. I'm, uh, my friend connected me with mutuals. I go to Columbia. So I'm just like subleasing an apartment in like but Columbia. you go to Columbia? Housing. Okay. Oh, they go to Columbia. They go to Columbia. Yeah. And I'm just kind of going alone and I'm just going to work a bit. And I want to really take an improv class there. And Do it see who I meet and whatever cool. I'm excited yeah congratulations that's Thank exciting you. yeah but on the topic of minimalism now that my room has way less junk in it I'm like why did I even need this <laughs> to begin yeah. with that's yeah. I they do seem to be on to something although I also they seem so aggressive I think they take it a little far it, it seems far. a little aggressive yeah. so if you like walk that line underwear. <laughs> and I don't know about that I don't know about yeah. that one. I feel like I'm trouble picking like one pen, you know? 
yeah. kind of a pen yeah. order. Um, yeah. Grace, that's also cool. I feel like you've hacked a life system in that you can have the experience of feeling like you're going to Columbia without actually ever going to Columbia. Yes. Because I've heard some things. So good, <laughs> good for you. Um, have you heard good, good luck. things? I have. I've heard good things about the experience of living in Columbia not attending columbia perfect because so. we're not my grandpa doing went to columbia you what oh, that's my a grandpa, dog, grandpa went to columbia wow and you didn't follow in his footsteps what a disappointment yeah it wasn't it, I, I, it wasn't where i wanted to be i, I toured and um, did you apply it's too small i didn't apply no i've never it's too it. small it's it? beautiful but yeah. it's, you know it's in new york city you know did you ever have, I feel like, I feel like New York City is a very common place for comedians to want to go to if they've kind of already been in the LA space. Would you ever want to go out there? Um, I think it's John Mulaney who has the quote, New York is a great city to live in if you're uh, very wealthy and only for six months and not a second more. <laughs> so yeah, maybe if I was very wealthy for a little bit, yeah. Just but, to vibe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if you want the New York experience, you need to, you know, I would want to spend a lot of money there. True, so, I know, yeah. Would the Chicago thing be like something you'd be interested in like long-term then after? I don't think so, but who knows? I, I would probably want to come back to the Bay Area or LA. Um, Which one more? Maybe. You would consider going back to the Bay? Maybe, it kind of depends what I end up doing for my work. Because I've always had fantasies of being like a YouTube comedian, someone who just puts out videos to their base, you know, whatever that is. Um, and I could do that anywhere. So maybe. Um, but I also want to do stand up, which I could do in the Bay. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Chicago's the point. Well, as you would always ask our guests, what is your, now that you've, you know, experienced more experiences since you've last been on the show, you're going to graduate. What is your dream plan 10 years from now? I would ask guests that. Um, just making money from comedy, being happy doing it, starting a family 10 years. I'm going to be 30. Am I 22 now? I'm 22 now. I'll be 32. So yeah. Um, How many kids? Yeah. Two, maybe three, two, two. What are you going to name them? I'll let her decide. I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you want? Damon gone, sure. I don't care. She goes wawa and poo poo, and you're like, I guess. Fucking, <laughs> they're your kids. Yeah, no, they're, they're your kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's very exciting, and we wish you the best of luck on that journey. Thank you. Yeah. You too. I'm very happy to hear that you're doing that. Thank you. I know. I'm excited. I feel like we're all, we're, we're just continuously growing and I just can't wait to see, cause I know we're all going to be successful. And I truly believe that. I think, especially in the comedy space, I feel like we're all very talented and ambitious. So I can't wait to eat, even see where we are in the next five years, you know? Yeah. So you're moving to New York, New York in like a month? Uh, yeah. June 11th. June 11th. What? Wait, that's less than. Yeah. That's less than a month. It's literally like three weeks away. Start looking at improv classes right now. Yeah? I hear UCB is the best. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't know New York, but I mean, UCB is definitely top dog right yeah. now. I mean, is it a question? I don't know. Apparently not. There was a very spinal sense <laughs> with your answer there. So. <laughs> Because I've heard about the different philosophies um, and it seems to me that if you want to, ah, I, I don't want, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking, I'm talking out of my ass. I'm going to stop talking, but <laughs> I would do UCB. Yeah. And because as some of the OG Riff listeners might know, you were kind of a theater kid and you even acted in some hooligan productions at UCLA. Do you think you'll ever get back into like the theater sphere? Not well. I've always had fantasies about doing a Broadway play. Um, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, but we would Broadway play about fantasies about a Broadway play. Meta. Meta. I'd watch Whoa. that. I'm gonna write that. That's good. You're welcome. You'll get a writing credit. Yeah, Thank you. Lab. Yeah. 
Um, but definitely I, I have acting fantasies, but I don't know if it's Broadway. Or like TV, but, because I myself too, am like, I kind of want to get good at acting. It's an important skill. And, and improv will help with that a lot. That's, that's why mm. I'm like, I feel like improv is good because it'll act and comedy skills improve. Because <laughs> um, I've talked about it a bit on the show, but it, it, in doing company for Spring Sing, a lot of it is acting right. for the camera. And I've really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I've definitely acted a bit in like shenanigans sketch shows, but acting in front of a camera was like a totally different vibe. Please fill me in uh, uh, yeah. on how company has been. It's been the most amazing experience. I've absolutely loved it. It really got me out of like my comedy rut because I felt like I wasn't producing any content. And then all of a sudden I went from zero to 100 where like every week we had meetings and every week they expected three sketches and you had to collab on uh -huh. most of them. Yeah, we, uh, by, the end of, by the end of it, we produced, like everybody wrote well over like 50 to 100 sketches combined and we select 14 uh -huh. of them. Um, so it's a, it's, it was such a fun process to like grow with everybody and then see who you kind of end up getting casted as a lot of the time yeah. <laughs> as people get to know you more. So that was really fun. Um, being able to write with everybody at different points in the week was really fun. Cause I mean, everybody's super comedically talented but everyone's so different. So it's like so cool to learn everyone's different styles. And then all of a sudden like a sketch you wrote gets selected and then you get to direct with like a production crew. So I got to do that a few times. I was really lucky and I got to direct a few sketches. That's awesome. And, That's really um, cool. It was so much fun. I love directing, but there was definitely a lot that I learned too. Like I learned like camera lingo, like, you know, the difference between like a, like a, like a tripod shot and like a gimbal shot, you know, and like how, how you, how you speak to your actors. I didn't, I didn't know that there was like etiquette with that, but there definitely is. What was there an incident? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I can be a bit, uh, not aggressive, but maybe like a little blunt and growing up with my figure skating past, I'm very used to like a coach. Yes. <laughs> just, like, telling you like wrong, do it this way. So, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to be my positive self. But when like an actor, an actress would perform a line or a scene wrong, I'd be like, no, we got to, let's do that again, but let's do it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it like that, but I really want to um, literally just read the line to them. And I guess that's really bad. Well, it depends on the uh, actor. Some, I mean, some are, can do like get line reads. Uh, I'm fine with that, but yes, yeah. many people do not like getting line reads yeah I totally was the director that wanted to to line read and I didn't know what that even meant and then yeah it it was funny because since we're all friends they would be a gag and be like are you line reading to me right now and then I'd be like what does that even mean I don't know I'm just <laughs> you I want you to say the line and then mm -hmm. so that was that was interesting um but yeah as an actor actor actress I would I would want the director to just tell me but that's probably because of like yeah. Past. I, I'm like, similar I feel like when it comes to comedy too sometimes I want to say there's a funnier way to say this line and it's the way I'm saying it <laughs> um but I totally. can't always say that yeah, yeah. I know so that, that was that was like a really great learning experience and then editing was also interesting because obviously we're not editing it there's like a crew that does that but then you have to work closely with them because obviously comedy is like all about timing so like the editing was so crucial so it was just like I loved it great experience it made me realize I want to learn more about directing I want to learn more about how to act because a lot of my like everybody majority of everybody in company is like an acting major at TFT so everyone is even those that weren't everyone's just so talented at acting and I could like see the lack of my skill like when I'm watching everybody else so I'm like I need to learn so much so it was like inspiring, I guess. But yeah, long story short, I loved it. It was a great experience. Interesting. I'm so excited to see what you guys came up with. Three days away. I, mean, I right. saw the promo where you're all wearing like bald caps or it looked like tights maybe, but like yes. some of them looked like <laughs> tights, um, but it was promising. So did you like the promo? I liked, I did. I was like, oh, and you opened it. I was like, okay. I wrote, I co-wrote that. Amazing. 
I'm, so I got to do is it, it on the company YouTube? It's on the the, um, the Instagram. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's on the it's on the Instagram. TV One moment, please. Thing. Um, it was like oh. a it was like a Steve Jobs spoof. Hopefully that read. <laughs> yeah, and while <laughs> Andrew looks it up, since I haven't had direct taking experience, so now that you've had, you've come to the end of or come to a point in the learning process, on um a spectrum of like Abby Lee Miller or whatever dance moms lady, and like too much of a pushover preschool teacher, um where is like the correct directing orientation for you at least? I think like. A good like I my goal would be to get like right in the middle where I definitely maybe it's slightly closer to Abby just because I of my nature I'm naturally like a a bossy person and I just can't help it but I would definitely want to be like put like have edit like I want to know the etiquette so I'm not being rude but mm. I I definitely would feel like I'm the more like do it this way um like and get it right type of person just because I'm like, that's efficient and that's how we'll get it done rather than like, no, yeah, that was okay. We can move to the next shot. Like, you know, so I think I'm in the middle ground but maybe slightly more Abby Lee, but but yeah. much nicer than her. I feel like I'm much nicer than her. <laughs> to quote Beyonce, you're not bossy, you're the boss. Yes, so, there you go. yes, you I'm not bossy, best. I'm the boss. And also what I learned on the set is that it's it can obviously be a very stressful environment and more times than not, you're working against some sort of clock. Like you're somehow within some sort of time constraint. So it's like things have to get done and they got to get done right. Um, but yeah, it was so much fun. The show's this Friday, 8 p.m. at springsing2021.com. Um, I'm so excited. One of the sketches, not to give it away, is um, a, like a parody song, but also kind of like an actual song that I like produced and wrote. And um, they they just told me that they were like putting it on Spotify, and I was like, oh. <laughs> cool. So now I'm an artist, guys. That's awesome. Yeah. And are you guys uh, like wrapped as far as your work, or do you do like are you hosting live? Yeah, to, I'm like we are like totally done right now. It's just it's simply outreach. The whole show is like stitched together, so right. it's just ready to be aired. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm like, very excited. I know. We'll have to link your song so everyone can go give you 0. 0. 0.00014 cents. Um, per. You know, I wonder if, I don't think I'll make any, it's on the comp, company, uh, not company. Spring Sing has a Spotify page, but I'm the artist. So I don't know how that works, but I'm like, hey. You're, it'll, it'll say like, it'll say just company, right? It would, cause they asked me when they were like, they were like, we need an album cover. And then they were like, were you the sole songwriter? And I was like, yeah. So. I'm assuming that somehow my credit will be due somewhere. Get your money. Get my money. I'm excited. The Chappelle moment. Yeah. It's been great. I really, I just, it made me realize that after college, I really hope that this sort of creative environment I'll find again and be able to continue this, you know? I'm like, good. it's kind of okay. scary because it's such a good <laughs> opportunity, but then you're like, I, like if I get stuck in like a nine to five, that would suck. Yeah. Well, yeah. keep putting the good work in. Yeah. 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 Andrew, with your um YouTube channel, would you, do you ever do like, would you want to do like sketch things ever kind of or? I would. Or yeah. I think like the night, the nicest, um, most comfortable setup at least would be doing like comedic video essays. You know, that mm. genre, you know, yeah. like. Drew Gooden, he's a nerd famous genre. one that I like. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, yeah. They are a good nerd genre, but yeah. They're nerdy white guys usually, which I can fit right in to that profile. Perfect. So, I mean, and they just, you know, they have a topic and do like a 15 minute video where they're talking to the camera, have content and throw skits in. Uh, and I'm like, I can do that. Can I do that? Give me three, three million subscribers. I think you can. I mean, I feel like I'm curious to know now that you've, you know, your UCLA experience is now pretty much complete. You were in shenanigans, hooligans, you did stand up, you did this show for a period of time. Is how overall would you rate this experience? Are, are you sad to see it go? Happy that it's over? What is this whole 
like what does it mean to you i'm just curious to know your whole like perspective on the whole thing i I, the short is that i had an amazing college experience i love every single year for a different reason i've learned what i want to do for the rest of my life i i met someone who i'm now in an amazing relationship with um i i loved ucla it gave me so many good things um i am ready to go um but yeah i have many fond memories I am cute. That was like, yeah. That was like that was adorable. Really hidden. I'm sad. Good. That was I know. that was really sad, but cute and a good answer. So I am sad. Yeah, <clears throat> it's uh, starting to dawn on me the last few weeks of this is it. Even though it like I haven't been doing UCLA stuff really, uh, I, and I've been doing just Zoom school for the last four quarters, a third of my college experience. Brutal. And it's going to be a third of both of your college experiences uh, has been on Zoom, um, which sucks, but eh, whatever. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah, like it's happening. I feel like I kind of came to terms with things like, well, honestly, pretty recently. (laughs) I feel like I was, I feel like I was on the bummer train for like a while, but now I think honestly, like ever since um like vaccinations started happening I was like you know what it's gonna be okay (laughs) there's a light at the end of the tunnel are you fully back you're fully vaxxed now right oh you got the card what do you think think that says boom what do you think that says boom yeah let me into your bar it's (laughs) right there have you been going out and indulging in the new found vaccinated things um only to like restaurants haven't really Mm done much else but i want to it's not because i'm like no we're not ready yet i'm just like mm, what are we doing i want to go to a giants game oh mm. baseball 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 i'm super into baseball now that's Wait. my character development <laughs> i've become more of a man <laughs> i have a person oh did you oh you guys are you, were frozen for a second. you tell like you teleported too it was like oh, a- i did moment so it's crazy (laughs) keep keeping the surprises coming Um, also a new development airpods pro (gasps) i'm actually very curious to know your thoughts because i'm a big airpods fan i have thoughts i have the airpods i love the airpods they were getting old had them for like two years battery was shorter um, you know, they're dinged up. They were having, they were a little buggy connecting. Got the AirPods Pro. Overall, huge win. Really? Mm. Yes. The noise canceling, amazing. Like when I'm out on walks and I turn the noise canceling off just to see what it's like, I'm like, what? It's, I was listening to it's a feature the whole time, constantly. Hmm? It's a feature. The noise canceling is a feature. You can turn it on and off. That's that's future right there. Yeah. They do <laughs> like they're looser in my ears, which I don't like, and I, I like squeezing back in sometimes. Yeah, people's ears are different, so you might not have that. I didn't have that with the AirPods, but my mom, she said they were falling out of her ears all the time. And then these bad boys, they don't fall out of my ears, they're just a little loose. But love them. So, they're good. It's good it to because yeah, I'm in the market. Uh, yeah. It's the planned obsolescence as far as all its drawbacks really does the, the, the power of an upgrade is really hits all the mental things that they're trying to hit uh, mm-hmm. pleasure centers or whatever. Uh-huh. So, gotta give How did I have that. non noise canceling earbuds before? <laughs> yeah. I... It's crazy. <laughs> wow. Modern, modern, mod, mod, okay. I'm not going to say it. I'm trying to say Same. modernity, mod, modern. I feel like I'm saying one of the syllables um, wrong. Wait, is that why it's called Moderna? <laughs> oh, Moderna? <laughs> no, modernity. Like I feel like. Oh, like modern, word. modern, modernity. Yeah, like that kind of. I don't know. It's trying to be like. I'm I'm picking up what you're putting down, Melissa. Good. It's little scraps that you can 
scrap of <laughs> salvage from what I am attempting to put down. I appreciate the effort. Yes. Modernity. Um, That's how Google told me it was pronounced. Modernity, yeah. Uh, modernity. You modernity. Like that. There. Well, yeah, you you hit the syllable. Your in, tongue in, can accomplish In terms that. of um modernity and, you know, the way that we're progressing with COVID, where do you stand now that we can be unmasked? Are you, how are you feeling about that? Okay. So I don't want this like played on CNN when I'm doing my presidential run in like 30 years. <laughs> of course. But I'm ready to say goodbye to masks. Andrew, this is a safe space because me too. Is it? Okay. If you're fully back, get vaccinated people. I'm pro-vax. This isn't anti-vax talk right now. No. But if you're, if you're we're, all, we're getting fully vaxxed like here in LA. And it's like, well, but we still got it. I'm like, okay, all right. Okay, all right, you know what? Never mind, sure, I'm fine with it. That's, I'm, that's my thought. Yeah, I'm very much like, take it off. Take <laughs> it off. Like, I'm over it. I go on... Whenever I can, I don't wear it. Cause I'm like, I'm I'm like well past my two week mark after my second dose. I'm ready to spit on walls, you know? Yeah. If I walk yeah. outside now, I never bring a mask. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of gonna be like a win for like people that have an okay bottom of their face. You know, like there was never an occasion before in which you could brag about half your face, but now it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm vaxxed up and I'm comfortable with this. No, literally. I was thinking about it because I, you know, usually I would go on my runs outside and you would have to wear your mask. But now I'm like, oh, I don't have to. But then I was like, oh, I get all like red and sweaty. I don't like masks anymore. Remember before and everyone was like, no, it doesn't have to shut up. You have to wear the mask. Now I'm like, masks are annoying. Yeah. <laughs> masks are so, I'm before I would literally like glare at people that wouldn't wear a mask. Cause I'm like, what, do, what are you doing? Totally. We're totally. in a pandemic, and now people that glare at me when I'm not wearing it, I'm like, you want me to show you my Vax card? Mm -hmm. I want I a shirt that says, I am fully vaccinated. You did? You got one? No, I want one. We, I heard people are laminating their vaccination cards. Yeah. I saw Mark. someone make um, shrinky dink earrings with the oh, copies of the, the card. I should take a photo of my vaccination card so that when I lose it... <laughs> and, I don't, I want to speak that. to whoever like designed them because they're like a very inconvenient size. They're I agree. Bigger than a phone. It could be smaller. Yeah. I Big for an average wallet, not that I carry one, but. It and also like... the design isn't that exciting. Like these are exciting. It's not pretty. Kind. And it's like, it's like, it's like a school slip. Yeah. Who did they, I feel like there's so many graphic designers that just want jobs, you yeah. know? So really could have been seriously a moment could have been extravagant <sighs> politics can never get it right politics got in the way they got in the way as always <laughs> yeah um well this is a, maybe a transition but um i've always uh all right <laughs> andrew when you um it seems like in the past when you've talked about your comedy you seem to have like a slightly academic approach and maybe that's the wrong term but like you seem to have oh, yeah. read some things and I was interested in like I haven't asked you before like when you're actually writing how much do you think of like the structure like joke structure or, or do you read those things to, for it to come like second nature kind of I do read them to come second nature uh, but there's a great quote I wish I remembered um, the you know the person who said the quote, I couldn't, yeah. Uh, it's, um, you, you must be a careless artist and a ruthless editor. And a lot of that learning process is learning how to be a good careless artist and what that means. And a lot of that learning process is learning how to be a ruthless editor and what that means. Um, you know, how to channel that whimsicalness and that silliness that is so vital to make comedy and how to channel that you know, intelligent academic who knows joke structure, who knows how to make something funny and make it 5% funnier, um, or just to know exactly why something funny isn't working. Uh, and that's something that stands up can help you with big time because uh, it's all in the words. Um, but yeah, I, I think I definitely do think more about 
uh, like like the science side behind comedy more than the average person. I mean, don't say that to brag. I think they're you know they're, they're people who get by fine without thinking about that. I feel like I need to. Maybe that's just imposter syndrome talking, but that's how I feel. Um, so yeah, but I also I love talking about comedy from a left brain perspective. Like I hear heard many comedians, like and non comedians talk about like how they hate talking about why something's funny because it ruins it i love talking about it i do it with uh, my girlfriend all the time something will happen in a show they'll get a good laugh and i'll go why did you think that was funny and she'll go well um when the guy was like good and then he put it on his face that was silly and i was like interesting and that to defied your expectations she's like yeah well no it's just it's fun uh, oh that's oh, interesting interesting uh because i don't know i don't know um yeah is that an answer yeah I think that was a great answer do you have like and this is an entirely selfish question do you have a particular like book uh, that you've or anything that was like the one you valued the most or anything uh, did you say notebook or or like book or, or anything that you like learned from or like that was you felt was very much worth your time so I kind of made my own thing that I called the comedy bible um which is and okay. like anytime like I started writing active notes on you know comedy whether that would be sketch or stand up or whatever it is uh and then I started just compiling a doc um and a lot of it is pulled from material. Um, here, I'll share screen. Is it just? Uh, is it just like a doc filled with your notes on comedy? Like that's so sweet. Oh my gosh, this guy's adorable. Wow. Uh, I'm trying to scroll. And uh, but yeah, there, there's tons of stuff. A lot <gasps> of this. Is can on... we have access to this, or is it private? Um, I can give you access. It won't. I won't make it. Uh, uh, yes, I'll give you guys access. Uh, I don't well, want to go. Through I also the whole feel thing. bad if this is your sacred work. I under you can say no. It, it is sacred, but it also isn't. Like this is just like life wisdom that really spoke to me that I threw in. Like this first section is just on advice. This is for like life. Um, I love for, that. I love that first quote. The be so good <laughs> they can't ignore you. Yeah, if, if people are ignoring you, that's okay. Just get better and market yourself. Wow, uh, I like love how your fun that is. <laughs> Uh, it's, this is, I'm talking to myself th in this whole thing. Um, but yeah, I've shown it to people and, oh, embrace the struggle. It's fun. Yeah, this is a great one. The struggle what? never goes away. That's, um, oh, Dave Chappelle said that? No, I, this is just me talking to myself because hmm. I'm saying, of course he struggles because everyone struggles, but he's someone who looks particularly like it's so easy for him to do right. stand up and to be funny. But of course it's not. Of course it's very hard and bombs to this day because everyone does. Yeah. You know, what is a bomb to him must change. But yeah, and then I, like this is stuff on sharpening your craft. Uh, and then I have stuff on like actual like writing and creating. This is all just about like punchline. Uh, like what is what is a setup? Like what wow. does that encompass? What this makes is incredible. a good punchline? Yeah. How long have, has, has this been in the work? Um, I spent a lot of time on it with winter break most recently, and I got it to like, oh my God, it's at 125 pages now. That's stupid. Um, but it's become, I, I, this is why I spent a good amount of my time on the last few months, um, when I haven't been producing much. Um, and what is not to interrupt, but what is your biggest, you know, m motivation behind writing this? What are you trying to get out of this? Is this something I'm you're trying to get to better read or? Oh, I, I do reread it, um, and, um, you know, I haven't reread it in a while, but yes, you know, I, I do want to reread it, but really, the reason I create it is because I remember it more, like, yeah, like, I, I had this moment where I was like, how many pages have I made of notes for dumb bullshit classes? Why don't I do that bullshit for stuff that matters? Uh, so I started doing it. Um, and this is it. Yeah, this is, oh, let me, let me find, uh, but a lot of this is not my writing. I'm watching a video and I'm like, oh, that's so fucking good. Right. Oh, that's good. Like, um, let me see the act of writing. Oh, oh, this whole thing. Let me see. Oh, Christoph Nyman. 
I love this guy. He's not even a comedian. He's an illustrator, but he has given me so much help. He has this list of writing tips yeah. um, that is for him all about illustrating, but everything applies to comedy. Um, like first step, it's showtime. What you're writing, uh, when you're writing, nothing matters besides what you're going to do in the next 20 minutes or two hours. There is no audience. There will be no consequences for what you write. No one is watching you. Waste ink, write a ton. You can owe trim later. You are God. You can literally, you can do literally whatever you want. I Invent, love that. Yeah. make something new. No fear, no pity. Judge it tomorrow. Um, so, you know, am I thinking about this when I write? No, but is it in me somehow? I hope. Yeah. And then there's totally improv. Oh, improv tips. Yeah. This is like some high value. Like, thank you <laughs> for yeah, being I'm willing like, to. This is. Even fantastic yeah yeah oh this a lot of this is taken up by the television and long form writing this was a project i did um okay beginning of this quarter gosh it might have been when i was like how do you how do you write a movie um like how do you actually do it that and I, I found always, this podcast. always wonder that <laughs> like I, I found an amazing podcast that changed the way i uh, watch movies and were to write movies if I were to actually write one um and it was all it talked a lot about how uh well I mean this is like a <laughs> like a just I just pulled the script from the podcast and put it in because it was so good uh, but he talks about how structure is a trap yes screenplay is structure but structure isn't what you think it is structure doesn't say you write this part on this page and then this part on this page here's a pinch point here's a stretchy point here's a midpoint Structure doesn't tell you what to do. If you follow structured guidelines, in all likelihood, you will write a well-structured bad script. Uh, structure is a- so system. interesting. Yeah, and what like the his thesis is, it's uh, a, like a, a movie is a character's relationship with a central dramatic argument. And he explains in like 40 minutes what that all means. Uh, and that's all that. Um, wow. But yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of my baby. This is, I mean, very impressive. I, I'm overwhelmed by it, but excited because it's like, I want, I like, I feel like every bit of information in this is like extremely important to what I want to do with my life. So it's like, oh my gosh, I need to know this information now, but it's like, you have time to learn it. You have time to learn it. So, yeah. I mean, you had yeah. time to, to write it all. And what is, so, you know, the show's winding down, but I'm curious to know what, so how do you come about every the, all this information, obviously you pulled from things that you were watching. Were you seeking out these things or did you just stumble upon everything that you watched? Definitely. A lot of it was stumbled upon. Like a lot of it would be like, I'd be watching John Mulaney and go, oh, he does this thing. That's really interesting. I don't want to forget that. I'm going to write it down. Um, but a lot of it, you know, I've seen, I've watched a lot of content about you know, studying the art, whatever, whatever that is. Um, and talking to, you know, my fellow comedians and learning from them. Um, that's been yeah. a lot of it. Yeah. And um, through learning this and listening to you speak about it, I just, I have to say, no matter how much you might have despised it through the years, but it sounds like a little bit of that computer science stem in you really taught you some things about your like analytical skills absolutely that this is what i say about my computer science degree uh it made me an engineer and i approach comedy like an engineer would um uh, you know but also because I, I approach it with a silly whimsical myths because i've learned oh you have to oh that is how you do it correctly that's the best way um I'm also a very orderly person. So something like this, this comedy Bible makes sense to me. And it's also, you know, being an engineer has taught me how to work hard um, and to optimize something. Oh, if I just could, you know, add, take out these few words or add a few words here, it can be 3% funnier. Um, again, is this the right way to do comedy? I don't know, but it, it works for me. Doesn't sound like it can be bad. That's I hope. I, sometimes I'm afraid I'm thinking myself to death. Um, I do feel yeah, like sorry. having known you for a while, you you do have a tendency to get a little too in your head, but um, I don't think that shines through your comedy. I think it just makes you yourself a little 
crazy at times and it gets a little too hard on yourself at times, but uh, luckily I don't think it ever has filtered its way into your actual comedy, which is great. Cause then mm. it's like, you're just hurting maybe your own self a little bit, but never your actual comedy. So it's like- I feel like it does sometimes. I feel myself overthinking how to be funny mm-hmm. more when I'm with people. If I'm alone working on my own material, I never really have an issue with it. But like even today, like in this podcast, there was a part of me that was like, wait, how do you be funny? Uh, wait, what's your character? <laughs> Are you silly guy? Are you snide guy that makes those comments? How do you be funny? Uh, I don't know. There's always, I feel like there's always gonna, it's like always like a double-edged sword or a catch-22 or whatever one of those phrases yeah. that would fit yeah. the situation well. But also, that's life, right? Exactly. And not to like over-trivialize it, but it also seems like the great start of like, a future like maybe like round 40 like so entire set you know like a reflection on that I don't know it feels like the beginnings of a really great introspective set so I don't know what yeah um the other thing is not also not to trivialize what your um your work or whatever but I, I this is only because I came across like an internet instruction thing the other day that was like three thousand dollars and i think that if you ever are pressed for money you definitely have the makings of a very strong you you can like like you're like i have an engineering degree automatically like five hundred dollars a month right there my master class don't think i haven't thought about that oh if i ever was to do master class oh i got some material to pull from oh that'd be nice I feel like you could also turn that into a book very easily. Yeah, but who am I? I got to be someone to, you know, even tell myself I have any right to publish a book about comedy. Maybe. Or maybe you could just be a Andrew at, right now and just say, I want to do it. Yeah. Mm. I'm, <laughs> I, I, it's nice to do it for friends who feel like can trust me to go, I made this. It helped me, maybe it'll help you, but the real money is in TikTok. And that is how I'm going to get my money. You know what? Honestly, I couldn't agree more. The second that I like finalized my plans of going to New York for the summer, I was like, I definitely need to capitalize off of this because I'm like like I, I'm at like a young hip age right now and I'm gonna be like in New York for the first time and I kind of just wanna like wow. um do like a little vlog thing. I kind of want to make like a new TikTok channel and like ditch my old one. Maybe post like my old one's just, my current one's just filled with so much random shit. Um, even though I have like my, my like number is like huge because of like my one viral TikTok. I feel like I can afford to just like ditch it. Cause that was literally one TikTok out of like the hundreds I've made. So, and I kind of <laughs> want to do like daily vlogs and be like, let's go do something in New York. Cause I don't know what's going on here. And I feel like people might want to watch it. I don't know. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. I think there's an endless demand for New York City blogs, vlogs. So I think yes, this this, there's this there's this one creator I've watched who's blown up from like zero to a million within the span of like three months because she just decided to post like literally like 20 TikToks a day of just like random snippets of like her day. She'd be like, hey guys, what's up? Like, I'm getting dressed to go to the gym. Like, get ready with me. And then she'd be back. She's like, I'm going to grab a bagel. Like, come with me. And it would be like that. And it was just like her whole day in a span of TikToks. And she just blew up overnight. And then obviously a lot of people started to like analyze why she is randomly just blowing up. And of course, there's definitely like a lot of things that have to do with privilege. Like, she's like a pretty young, skinny, fashionable, like, you know, white 20 year old, 20 year old girl who is obviously like wealthy enough to have this like lifestyle that people are interested in watching, um, which I think is, is very valid and definitely like a, a big contributor, but she's also like has a good personality and like is actually like interesting and blunt and whatever. So I do find that in terms of being analytical about why is this working? It's so, mm-hmm. I find it so fascinating to like really look into it and all everybody was because this girl was such like an anomaly she really came from out of nowhere and her like method was so bizarre because she was literally just posting like tiktok after tiktok constantly and it was just like you tell you could tell she didn't care if it was quality or not it was just like sometimes it would just be like her laying in bed saying some nonsense and she would just post it like right after some other tiktok but people were like i'm gonna watch this and it was like people are watching yeah people are watching 
Yeah. <laughs> so, Grace yeah. is watching. I'm, I, yeah, she started coming up all over my For You page. And I was like, I guess I am watching. <laughs> I guess I am. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It is like the cycle of analyz, analyzing and then reanalyzing and all that stuff. I definitely find myself falling into too. So it's interesting to see. I feel like that's a good sign though for every, like all of us. But yeah. As young comedians. Yeah. Yeah. It can just happen overnight. Be- There's definitely like outside factors that, benefit kind of like the ones I that t- people were saying like in terms of like the privilege and stuff but aside from that I feel like if you have you know the right personality and people want to watch they're going to mm-hmm. especially in the big apple in the in the bustling city that never sleeps mm-hmm. people are dying to give, give them a bite yeah 24 <laughs> 7 24 7 I'm gonna look Seven so stupid because I'm gonna have no idea what's going on but it's fine on the subway, <laughs> homeless guys throwing up behind me. <laughs> I think that's come with me. My content. <laughs> It'll be like Grace, you should get out of there. I'm like, guys, I don't know where I am right now, but this group of guys seems really nice. They said they're coming back at their place with treats. <laughs> I'm dizzy. <laughs> don't go. Yeah, I'm like, guys, things are kind of blurry, but <laughs> I'm in New York, so it's okay. Uh, no, be safe. Yeah. I will. I'll be very safe and have my guard up at all times. Okay, good. Chicago, too. Both of you. On guard. Chicago. When I told my dad um, yeah, that especially Chicago. To Chicago, he said, murder capital of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, exactly. <laughs> That's why I want to go. He, he, Not murder capitally enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, I think that pretty much brings us to the the end of this show to the end of the season. I know. I think that Andrew, was a great. That was a that great. Show. That was a fan, a fantastic a closer of this season. I feel like we all, as we always say, this show's about learning. Okay, we teach you things here. Yeah, and we riff episode. you things, and we riff you things. Andrew, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. We wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. We'll be sure to keep up to date with everything going on. Melissa, any final words? Thank you and see you later. Thank you and see you later. (laughs) Bye.